Welcome back to the Lucid Nightmare. I'm your host as always, Jay Schatzer, and today I've got a great one lined up for us. It is Marcel Camus' 1959 masterpiece, Black Orpheus, and I must say it is a beautiful, beautiful flick. It showcases some of the most amazing landscapes in Rio that you'll see on film today, and it's just amazing. So let's just dive right into this one. And here it is, guys, Black Orpheus. Black Orpheus is a beautiful and magical film that borrows elements from the Orpheus and Eurydice myth and transports it into the majestic shores of Rio de Janeiro during the wondrous time of Carnival. This film is a vision to behold, and it captures the essence of a time long lost as the age of cinema progressed into modern form. We are introduced to our two main characters very early on in the film. Eurydice, played by a stunningly classical young woman named Marpessa Dawn, is a young woman fleeing from her home in a fear of a stalker and a reoccurring nightmarish vision. Orfeo, played by a charismatic young man by the name of Brino Mello, is a trolley conductor and musician who has recently been engaged to a beautiful woman named Mira, played by the vivacious Lourdes de Oliveira. One day, both Orfeo and Eurydice meet as Eurydice arrives in Rio de Janeiro, and a small but simple spark ignites between the two. The imagery during this city scene as everyone prepares for the coming of Carnival is a sight full of visionary pleasures with the brash and vibrant colors of the city bursting at the seam. The entire feel of this opening scene and the quality of the shots remind me of the cityscapes of San Francisco in Alfred Hitchcock's 1959 film, Vertigo. The flair of the visuals is just a sample of what the film has to offer. These brilliant images whisk you away to a world that only seems to exist in the celluloid fantasy of the director's mind. As the two main characters get to know each other, their friendship slowly starts to grow into something much more. The director knows how to frame the gorgeous landscape of Rio de Janeiro and the scenes with our two actors interacting with each other in such a breathtaking setting is an awe-inspiring sight, one that cinema was made for. The scenery combined with the blooming of their relationship is a copious vision of exquisite brilliance and one that develops even more as the film progresses. I really can't say enough about the beauty of Rio de Janeiro. Marcel gives us enticing vistas of the surrounding areas that water the mouth and glisten the eyes, begging us to fall prey to its ever alluring sight. We are given glimpses of these heavenly views in between each scene, showing both night and day in this stunning city. Each shot looks stripped from a painting, moving with such grace that it carries you along with the story. Marcel has given us some stunning photography with this film, and all of his efforts have paid off. Marcel not being satisfied with giving us a captivating love story of two innocents and placing it in such a wondrous place brings a darker element into the story. Eurydice's visions of a stalker that has driven her from her home and has now followed her to Rio de Janeiro are quite haunting. But are they really visions, or is there in fact a stranger closing in to seal her fate? She sees a masked man peering from a doorway, and it shocks Eurydice cold, seeing the nightmarish image of the skull-faced man in this place and time. She fears for her life and knows that death will find her one way or another. It's that constant cat-and-mouse game that really pushes this movie forward, coupled with the fact that we get to see these two budding lovers meet and watch their love grow. Of course, it wouldn't be a Rio de Janeiro movie without showing the amazing scenes of Carnival. The Carnival scenes are absolutely pulsing with life and energy as the full wonder of the event is captured with great excess. The spirit of Carnival washes over the entire screen as you'll witness to its brilliance. And I must say that Marcel captures the spirit of Carnival to perfection. 
The visuals are alive with the spirit of the festival and it really plunges you into the moment. As the film moves along, it delves back into a horror element when Eurydice is chased by a masked killer. This chase sequence that resembles a masked killer type slasher film delves deep into the surreal as they take their chase through harsh red light filled factories and green hued accented halls. It's as if we have time traveled to 1963 into a Mario Bava film with its expressive lighting schemes and rich shadows. These vibrant scenes resemble some of Bava's most atmospheric work such as Black Sabbath, The Whip in the Body, and Blood and Black Lace. I wonder if Bava was somehow influenced by Black Orpheus and was entranced by the saturated colors of these particular chase scenes. I was actually startled by how dynamic this horror element was in the story. It kind of caught me off guard and left me glued to the screen as each brand new color was presented into the frame. It's an engaging visual device that has been used in some of the most beloved Italian horrors. Dario Argento went wild with this concept in his 1977 film Suspiria. It's amazing to see that this Brazilian film could have influenced such diverse directors as Bava and Argento and started a trend that would thrive in the Italian cinema. All in all, Black Orpheus is a stupendous achievement in cinema history. It's one that spans a great deal of emotions. Like all myths, Orfeo and Eurydice's love ends in tragedy, but I'll let you put the pieces together for yourself and see how you come to interpret it. It's a very ambiguous conclusion and one that gives the film an extra hint of mystery and builds on the legendary myth. Its story is one of hope that is shattered by our very nature to be human and to follow our curious tendencies. Whether this is a morality tale or a tale of mourning, we are given the impression that love might withstand all things, but in the end, it's up to us to decide. I really enjoyed this captivating journey into two lovers' lives as they come to grips with finding each other only to be ripped apart by an unknown destiny. The horror elements of this film are greatly appreciated by this viewer and help drive the conclusion of the film home. If surreal tales of mythic proportions are what move you at the cinema, then I highly suggest that you check this film out as soon as you can. Its magical web of hope and tragedy will spin through your mind long after the abrasive colors of the carnival lights have faded. It's without a doubt that Black Orpheus is a classic, classic film. And there you have it guys, Black Orpheus. If you haven't seen it, uh, I beg you to check it out as soon as possible. It really is a unique, unique entry in uh, Brazilian film. There's quite a few good ones out there, but this one is, stands at the very top. I absolutely love it. So I hope you enjoy the visuals on that one. And if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. Uh, and leave a comment if you want. Love to hear from you. Uh, that's it for me today. But uh, until I see you again, hope you have a good one. And hope you enjoy. See you guys later.